Today we're going to build this knife and this knife is based off of a reciprocating blade and some scrap lumber and a nail. So let's get to it. I'm going to start by drawing out kind of the rough idea of the knife. So we're just going to be doing a half tang. So probably and because we're going to be trying to keep as much of this tempered edge because I don't suspect this is being tempered back here we're going to try and keep as much of this so give a little bit of a and of course this is just sort of roughing out your profile and just a simple drop point is what we're going to do with this knife you can make a clip point or any other sort of style of knife with this it's just we're going to go with this for now just a little approximately three inch blade and then here's where we're going to put the pins on that now the blade itself will be only a small amount but about there and we're going to start profiling that. We, we can use a file, we can use a angle grinder or a belt sander. You've kind of got two options. You can use the back side and file it down, but then you're going to keep this. There's no way that a file is going to touch these hardened edges. Something just to kind of work that down. So we're just going to go ahead, knock down the edges, and start profiling the knife. I'm using this poor man's forge just to sort of show that you can't get away with minimal amounts. And I don't want to heat the metal up too much because then we're going to lose all purpose of trying to reuse the edge like this to, to avoid heat treating and tempering the knife. finish up with that and next time we come back we're going to see a bit better of a profile I'm going to show how you deal with the the pins and the other parts of the knife with the handle and that okay so now we're starting with something like this and you've either gotten here through heating the metal up and working it with the file because it's just simply too hard to work on a file or you've worked it down on an angle grinder or a belt sander. Right now I'm just going to profile this and I'll actually test to see if the edge will work down a file. Basically I kind of wrecked a file trying to work one of these down already so that's why I know this is a very hard edge. So while I was working it on the angle grinder I was making sure that it did like right it's still wet here I was making sure that I would just touch it just a little bit for maybe five seconds a nice kind of stroke dip it in the water go back again and just keep working it like that so now we're going to start it on the belt sander just to put somewhat of an edge onto it
Okay, so you're not looking for much of an edge, just a little bit, just like that. This is a pretty rough edge. So I'm going to clean that up, and then you're, next time you're going to see it, we're going to take care of the pins and drawing out the handles. Now that we have our blade profiled, and there is a little bit of an edge, I mean, it's nothing to cut paper with, well, that spot might, but there's not much of an edge on it. You just got down to the point to where it just, you can even see a little bit of reflection on its edge, and you can't really get much because this is kind of a thin piece of metal. It's only one eighth inch. So now we can go to the pallet wood. What this is, is I did manage to find, I think, a piece of cedar, three quarters of an inch. It was off of an old pallet. It was used for some binding or for banding. And we're just going to look at a handle that will fit approximately like that. So kind of pick your spot where you like your piece of your uh, the grain or anything else that you might want to incorporate into it. And then just get yourself kind of the rough idea. So there's where we'll be making a handle up to. And to make a handle, you're looking at anywhere between three and a half inches to four inches. The kind of rule of thumb is three and three quarter. That's sort of a rough little middle area. And we're going to try and go with that. So I'm just going to use my own hand because this is usually just for your own personal. Take that, mark it right there. There's where the hand is about. I already know mine. Mine's three and three quarter. So let's give it kind of like a hunter sort of end. And again, this is just sort of a rough profile. We don't need to worry about... There. I think that will look decent. So. I'm going to cut this out on a bandsaw, but you can use a hacksaw, a coping saw, or any other kind of saw that you can use. Basically a coping saw would be nice to get around in these edges. We don't need to worry about too much and I'll be back once we get here and I'll show you how to attach that to that. Now that's done and the second my bandsaw hit that I knew it was cedar. So this is going to be a cedar piece of handle. Now set your, or align it, so that you can see where your pins will be, and you just sort of eyeball this part, but I'll be marking it so that I know where to cut to. Now we're going to worry about reprofiling and redoing the handle here in a minute, but right now we're just going to worry about the pins. So, I'm going to take you over to the vise. Now you can either use your poor man's vise for this, or in this case, you're just going to see my vise over there. I'm going to cut down the center right here so that we can just insert our blade like that. So we're at the vise now, and we're going to take care of this. Now I've marked this down the center, and just a little tip, if you don't want to grind off your teeth or your kind of the little profiling that they do on the vise grips, take two blocks of wood and just squash it between there holds it just as tight. So the biggest thing is making sure that you are even. So this is kind of the tricky part. And once you've scribed it with just a few holes then you can just lightly And every so often make sure that you're good with that. So this might be a little bit of a tedious process. Once it has enough I'll make sure. There we go.
that's done. Now all we have to do is put the blade in there. Now that's my little jiffy marker. The cut is straight, just the little jiffy marker is kind of all over on there. Okay, now we've got this marked off and we've already gonna kind of know where it's gonna line up because we've done that. Now you shouldn't have to tap it in there. If you tap it in there with a hammer you might be a little bit too firm but it should be a fairly good kind of snugness. But you should be able to do it with your hand no problem. Now we're looking at that. So if you want to you can profile this a little better on your belt sander. I'm not going to bother and that's where we're going to leave off. Now what we're going to do now is we just give a little bit of a clamp on it, figure out where you want your pins, and that's where the nail comes into play. So we're going to put one pin there and one pin there. We'll drill that out on the drill. I've already got everything picked out for my nail and drill bit. Now I use the calipers to do that, but generally you can just sort of get a feel and my drill bit is 11 ths on a three and a half inch common nail. Don't use a phosphorus nail because that's coated with phosphate and it's going to rust on you. This is still going to rust on you but it's cheap. It's not like stainless steel or anything. If you're working on a budget I figured I'd try and use a nail for the pin instead. And it's easier to peen that because we're going to say we're not going to use any epoxy on this either. So get your drill set up and it would be nice to have just something to clamp on to. So at this point I'm actually hoping that this is soft enough to drill through with the material. Now I already preset my hole so I basically just sort of tapped it with a nail and I'm going to try drilling it out here just to see if we can get through there. actually had a little bit of a blooper because I used a dull drill bit and then once it hit the metal it didn't go anywhere. So we're going to try that again with a new drill bit. So what happened was I'm unable to drill through this, so we're going to have to actually put heat to it. I was trying to do this build without putting any heat on it, no forges or anything like that. Just file out a knife and have nice, uh, basically just a quick sort of build for no forge, no propane, no coal or anything like that. That didn't work out. So we're going to have to put heat on it just with a little propane torch. and. I guess that is actually a good thing anyway, so let's get to it. Alright, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take a propane torch and wrap your piece like this right where you want to stop the tempering. Just soak it with water, a rag or anything, it doesn't need to be ice water, it just needs to be up against this. Soak it in there and then put your flame onto it and just start warming it up. So I'm going to do this and I'll be back once this is annealed, but generally speaking it shouldn't take too much. I mean you don't even need to quite get it to red, that's enough to usually soften it up and get rid of the temper. line right there is going to tell you whether or not you bled into here. So if you get this down into your edge, this part's going to be soft. But this part here, we should now be able to drill that out. So we're going to try that. And I'm just going to try and use the same drill bit. Just keep that in, in the same one. I've already got them all drilled out. 
and we'll see if it was successful. Okay, so that's try three. So I just sharpened up a bit that I had and I'm gonna try and drill through that hole. Now what I did was I brought this to a a light red temperature and just let it cool down. I still have my blue line right there on the other side. So we're gonna give that a go, see if it made it. Okay, so that worked out, and I'm just going to get the handle, and I'm going to tap that again. Alright, we're back. So, I just made sure that the holes were lined out, and I'm now going to drill out the other side, and then we're going to move on to the pins. And relatively close, not bad for just a quick build. So we're going to get pins in there next. So all we're basically doing is taking a standard common nail and we'll be putting that into there. So I'll get those cut up and I'll be right back and I'll show you about peening them. Right now we're going to start taking care of basically gluing the handle to the knife. And as you can see now it's going to be part of just a partial tang. So we're going to put a little bit of glue on both sides, kind of get inside the pin or pin holes here, and then get a little bit on in the center there with the, the tang. Okay. We're going to now start with this. Now that we've profiled a little bit of the knife handle here at the start where the blade would start meeting up with the handle, we'll get going with the pins and we're going to glue those into place with an epoxy. So, some of you might notice that this is a different blade or a different handle. That's because when I tried peening it, the soft cedar just broke right about here. And I mean, I, I'm really close. I mean, there's not much here anyways, and it's kind of pretty heavy grain, or pretty thick grain there. So, we're gonna get ahead with this. Actually, you know what? We have to do this first. So, I don't remember the brand of this. It is old, it's about a year old since I've last used it. I remember I didn't like this particular one just because it took so long to set and it didn't want to work right. But for this little project, I'm just gonna use this anyway. So it's always better to have too much than not enough. And I'm not even sure how well this is going to work because the brown one seems a little thick. But that's okay, this is basically just a test knife. And it's going to work in to kind of a cloudy color anytime you're working with epoxy. So basically what happened was I was trying to make it so that you didn't need to use an epoxy. You can just peen the nail over, which was part of the reason for using a nail instead of stainless steel. That way it was a softer material. And this is the first time I'm ever using a screw. I wouldn't uh, recommend it. Just get yourself a popsicle stick or something like that. That's always better. Just a little scrap piece of wood. Okay. So hopefully this stuff works. Like I said, I've left it out for a year. The reason why I stopped using it was because I didn't like how it worked anyways. It took so long to set. But we're going to try it here now. And this kind of comes into the part to where I said, make sure you got enough because it's going to... I made a knife a long time ago, one of my first bushcraft knives that I made on the video. 
and I didn't have enough of this and it didn't want to set right. And by the time I got the other half of the scale on mixed up more and got the other half on it didn't didn't seal right. Okay, let's see if I can get some into here. So I'm just going to see if I can get a little bit more into these cracks and we'll start profiling after this. Okay, and we're back now. Now what I've actually remembered was why I didn't like that epoxy that I was talking about. It's a slow set. So what happens is it takes three days to dry. It's still a little tacky but we're going to go ahead and work on this. And remember when I said I had a second handle? That's why. When I tried to work on the peening, it just split the wood. So I was trying to figure out something that you would be able to use out in the wilderness, but you still can't. Just make the pins a little tighter and then just give it a little bit of tapping. I'll put that little fail on there and you can see what exactly it did. So I'm going to get geared up and then we're going to take care of the rest of this. And I'm going to show you how profiling the handle and other things now. So before I actually put the mask on, I'm actually going to cover this part right here. What I normally use, but because this is so soft, is a wood rasp. I actually prefer to clamp it into a vise and use a wood rasp on this. But I'm finding that the cedar is just a little too... too large of grains and it's just wanting to break up. It's a little too soft for any kind of real knife handle, so I mean it's not really a permanent sort of fixture. So I'm going to do most of my work on the belt grinder here. Okay. So before I get started, I am wearing a mask, so it, I'm hoping this is picking up. This is for dressing your belt. So this just cleans it up, gives it a little bit more life. It's basically a piece of rubber, and you can pick these up at the hardware store. So what I do is I start off like this. And I just work it back and forth like this until I get the profile that I like. And of course, don't, if you did sharpen this down already, make sure you tape it up. I'm still pretty, there's really nothing there for me, or for me to catch on.
So here's one of the problems with using old epoxy. It didn't want to set right, but you know what? I'm not really making this for any purpose. There's no customer other than to beat this up and show you guys if this metal is going to hold out good and to kind of show you something for how to make a knife like this. So I'm going to keep working on this and next time you see me this is going to be rounded out a little better and we'll cover staining wood. Okay, so once we are finished with the belt grinder or the wood rasps for profiling, then we can either switch to a ra or a file, or you can just start straight away with sandpaper. Now, I prefer 400 grit sandpaper because when we go to work these edges down, you don't put real heavy grooves going into the wood grain this way, which is a real bugger to try and get out of the wood grain when you go to stain this. So for now, I'm just going to use my poor man's ra or vice here, which maybe some of you have had to make and use, but at least uh, we can even try it out here. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just softening the corners so that it's a soft kind of feel. There's no sharp edges or anything. And I don't want to work it too badly. Otherwise, the files are hard to get out. So the bottom side's okay. Sandpaper will take care of that. So I'm not sure if you can see that little trick, but just take your file, take your sandpaper, instead of cutting it. And you just got your strip there. So you'll see a lot of people do this. Now technically this is why I don't like using sandpaper for this part. It removes a lot of material and it does get you going. But what happens is this action right here is putting scratches into the wood grain. So later on when you go to stain it takes a lot more to get out. So I really only just like knocking it down on the, the edges like this. Most of your work should be done with the grain. Which is again why I like using just a 400. I don't like getting in there with a 120 or 240 even. That starts leaving a lot of scratches that you got to work out really slowly with like a higher grain like a 320 or a 400. So now once you just sort of knock the corners off, now you can start working into with the grain here. So the biggest problem that you'll have is along the side. That's where you're really going to see the scratches and dents or anything. Especially if you use a soft wood like this, which again I don't recommend cedar for any kind of knife handle unless you're using it for the novelty of it. This just happened to be some pallet wood that I salvaged. So this is basically just a tedious process of sanding and think of it like draw filing. This is all you're doing to the handle part. So I'm going to take care of this and when we get back I'll cover some more. We're in the home stretch and we really just have to take care of the, the staining and the sharpening on the edge. So I'm going to show the sharpening on the edge. I'm not going to do that. I would normally do that after I've stained it. But what this is is a 600 and I think it's a thousand. And you can just pick that up. These are kind of your starting entry. They're only six, about ten dollars or so. Now if you don't have anything like that you can take 
just a standard block of two by four, take your grit, like sandpaper, wrap it around here and treat that like your block. Basically you just take the same edge, push and then lightly drag, you're just touching and then a little bit of pressure, push. And this is a slow, tedious process. Once you get there, you just move along the blade edge. The edge gets a little more tricky, you just sort of have to work it a little bit like that and then you just flip. So what I did was I just took a standard piece of 2x4, put a little bit of tape on the back side like that, took just a little tack right there and that's what holds it in. And that's all that holds it down because all you're doing is putting pressure that way. So I'm actually going to take care of that later and I'm going to just take care of the sanding or the staining of the handle. You don't need to get special or fancy with the staining. I mean I'm not going to worry too much about that. You just take your stain, you don't need to take any kind of Q-tips or, Q or anything, be super precise, dab that in, Now the one thing about this is you're going to see every scratch that you just did. Now the stain might tell you to take off some after drying for like let's say 10 minutes or so. I find if you do that, if you follow their instructions, this knife handle is not going to turn out the way it's supposed to. What's going to happen is the stain isn't going to penetrate all the way into the wood. Actually, this is so soft, the cedar, it, you can see it's actually soaking in already. So what, you, what happens is the stain wants to rub off if you have a harder wood like maple or anything like that, if you follow the instructions on there, simply because they're not intending this for knife handles or anything. They're intending for trim and furniture and that. So just go through, kind of touch up, clean up any spots that you might have missed. And when you're done, take one of your C-clamps, and set to dry. Alright, next time you're going to see this, it's going to be sharpened. I'm going to go through and finish this with uh, linseed oil. Well, I did what I could to get an edge on this, but I couldn't quite get it to the point to where it shaves consistently. So, there's a couple rough areas. Yeah. There's just a couple rough areas right in here where I nicked it once when I was kind of grinding it down on the belt grinder. That's probably my mistake on that end, why this knife doesn't perform that way. Because it does work out here and here, but just once it hits that little centerpiece there, you got to be really careful you don't accidentally graze it because you'll leave a little bit of your blade like that. And so this part gets sharp, this part keeps getting sharp as well, and this part kind of stays as a flat edge. 
Technically what I'd have to do is I'd have to go back and rework the edge on this back on the grinder. But we're not going to worry about that because what I'm going to basically cover right here is just basically finishing your knife handle now. The stain has dried and what I'm about to do is just put a little bit of linseed oil on it. You don't need to get fancy with it. You don't need to dab it on with cotton swabs or anything. Same as the stain. Just take it, apply it with a rag. And let it soak in. Do this six times so that the oil soaks into the wood. The wood is quite dry, so it's going to soak it in quite a bit. You're going to see that really off the start. You're going to see it's going to soak right in. I would say about an hour this thing would already be dry. So then apply it again. And you're probably looking at about two hours and it'll be dry. Just leave it overnight. And do the same thing with the C-clamp. Just hang it up like that. By about the third day, you should probably have at least three coat or coats on it, probably a fourth. Every time it starts to look, like every time it's not glossy like that, just reapply another coat and it'll get a film built over it. And then you know you're done. Then you can switch out to like once a month and then after about six months, you can just re-oil every six months. Well, we did it. We took this blade and turned it into this knife using a common nail, some scrap pallet wood, and just basically a scrap piece of reciprocating block or blade. Now, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't go ahead with a handle like this simply because my idea was something with minimal tools and no heat, and that didn't work out that way. So, probably the best thing to do is just go paracord leave this backside just so that you can saw wood with it as well or bone let's say you're skinning and you need that little bit then draw this out on file you're probably going to wreck the file and for an example of what this is this is about two millimeters thick or one eighth i think is what it is for in millimeters and it's not a dollar store reciprocating blade. It's a contractor's blade that I actually picked up at a local hardware store and paid about $6 for it. But if you can get your hands on one of them, we're gonna see if they actually make a good knife, but I suspect it will <clears throat> because of the simple fact that it was hardened all the way through. I couldn't drill through it and I couldn't work it with a file. Now, stay tuned for part two. We're gonna take this knife and put it through a torture test. See how well it really does hold out. If you like this build, thumbs up, subscribe, leave comments below.